Magazine book review segment. Today I'm going to talk about two books that are about computer people. They're called, people like this are called hackers. One of these books is indeed called Hackers. It's by Stephen Levy. And the other book is called The Eudaimonic Pie. Let me first talk a little bit about this book, Hackers. Hackers traces the history of the people that got interested in computers, starting back in the 60s at MIT, where there was a very, one very large computer. They used to call these big computers hulking giants. Now, at that time, it was very hard to interact with a computer. You had to type out the instructions onto punch cards. You had to feed them in, to, in with, as batches, give them to technicians who would feed them in, and wait perhaps several days to get your output. The hackers were frustrated by this. They felt the computer should be open to everybody. It should be possible for them to get in there and hack away at their programs. So they started sneaking in at night in MIT. There are several types of hackers there. Some were into lock hacking, meaning they would get any possible lock open. They also broke all the computer codes. But their, their main goal was simply to run more and more complicated programs, things like synthesizing music or uh, computing very strange kinds of numbers. In the uh, 1970s, there was a change from these so-called software hackers to the hardware hackers of Silicon Valley. This is when people began inter getting interested in making chips, putting the chips together into computers. And there's some fascinating information in this book about, for instance, the birth of Apple computers. It was basically just a couple of dope smoking hippies in a garage that put it together. This is the difference between the West Coast hackers and the East Coast hackers, by the way. The MIT group, none of them even smoked cigarettes, but the, the, uh, the West Coast group seemed a lot more relaxed about things like that. Um, so we have the, the background of how the Apple computers were built. That was sort of phase two of hackerdom. Then the third phase is when they started designing games. This is when computers really came into everybody's life, when you started seeing space invaders and so on. They're very strange people, the hackers. They're able to uh, work away at a computer for 30 hours, then sleep for 12 hours, then work another 30 hours. Uh, very odd people not really like uh, people that you normally meet. You don't meet them because they're downstairs in the computer room. Uh, and it's, they certainly are, to a certain extent, nerds. But Stephen Levy, in his book, Hackers, tries to make them seem somewhat heroic. In a way, he's imitating Tom Wolfe's The Right Stuff book, which is a bit ludicrous, actually, when you're talking about these guys in nylon shirts and gabardine pants. Uh, OK. Now, the other computer book I want to talk about is called the Eudaimonic Pi. Now, Eudaimonic, that's a word from the Greek. It would mean good intelligence, I suppose, and pi is a pie they're going to cut up. What this book is about, it's about people that are a little bit more freewheeling than the computer hackers. What they're into, they're also into physics. What they did was build a computer in order to help them win at roulette. Now, roulette seems very random, but the way roulette works, they, start, they set the center wheel spinning, and then they roll a ball that goes around and around a track, and then it drops down into the roulette wheel and sticks in one of the 38 possible slots. Now, the way the eudaimonic Pi people did it, they were able to design and build a computer small enough to hide inside one of their shoes, and uh, what they would do, use their big toe for a signaling, and uh, click the first two times they saw the, the zero go by on the roulette wheel. And that would get the speed of the roulette wheel computed in. Then they'd click when the first two times they saw the ball spin around on the track at the top. That would get the speed of that. And the thing would then carry out a computation and predict it with enough certainty so they had a 44% edge over the house. So you would think that these people would be very wealthy by now, but uh, the problem was, Computers aren't really made to be worn in your shoes and walked on. That was, the computers were constantly malfunctioning. Another problem was sending the signal. One, usually there would be, one person would have the, the roulette computer shoe in his shoe, the other one would have a receiver in his shoe to pick up the signal. One would be taking the data and the other would be doing the, uh, the actual betting. But it's really a really interesting book and I would imagine that Sometime in the next few years, somebody's really going to get it down and make a huge killing. Of course, at that point, the casinos will change the rules of roulette. 
So these are two interesting books about computers. It's, I guess the amazing thing is that the people that are, are messing with computers and advanced physics are very, very uh, ex interesting people. They're not at all the sort of robots that you might take them to be. And anybody who's interested in getting further into computers, I would recommend both these books, Hackers by Stephen Levy and The Eudaimonic Pi by Thomas Bass. On the whole, I would say Eudaimonic Pi is a little bit more interesting to read. But Hackers is a very interesting historical thing. Okay, well, thanks for being here with me again on Brain Food. See you next month.